Hello everybody, my name is Benny and welcome to The Fool's Apprentice. Today is our one card tarot study, a series that I'm doing. I'm trying to get through all 78 cards with 78 different people. Oh my gosh. Uh, and today I have a guest. Hi Jennifer, how are you? Hello Benny, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing really well. Let me tell you, the hangman is really in my radar today, and I'll tell you why in a bit. Uh, um, so introduce yourself to everybody. Yeah, I'm Jennifer with Bohemian Rose Tarot. Um, I've been reading tarot for, I guess, almost six years, five, a little over five years. Um, tarot is now my full-time business. So I, I was, it's fun. Um, I was a teacher for a whole lot of years, an English teacher and then a music teacher for many, many years, decided that was a lot of stress and uh, opened my own business. So here I am, and I really enjoy reading tarot and helping people. I have a YouTube channel, Bohemian Rose Tarot. And, uh, and, and you got Instagram. I do. I have Instagram and Facebook. I'm more active on Instagram, but it's at Bohemian Rose Tarot um, for both. Okay. Yeah. And where are you located? I am in Arizona. I'm in Tucson. Okay. So yeah. And uh, I I work at a little shop. Well, two now I work at a little shop called Libra and Thorn on the east side of Tucson. It's a lovely little place. And uh, then I'm starting actually just this week to read at a store in Green Valley as well, Sonoran Magic. Um, they're kind of they're best friends, like the two people who own the store. So yeah. it works out really well. We're a small yeah. community. It is. It is. So I'm, I'm excited. Yeah. The metaphysical community is kind of a small community, right? Uh, yeah. So I, here in San Antonio, which is not a, which is not a small city. We're pretty big. Right. Um, I only know of two. Uh, one of them's in a mall. And yeah. The other one is out in the outskirts in some little shopping center that you have to <clears throat> kind of find and drive to. Yeah. So, um, be nice that we had more, but, uh, probably Austin, I'll, I'll see if I ever can make a trip. Oh, I bet Austin has a lot. Yeah. yeah. Austin. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. These shops are about an hour apart. So I'll have about an hour, 40 minute drive or so to the second shop, but that's okay. Um, I think it's going to be a great experience. Good, so, good. yeah. Thank you. So Thank you. today we are here to discuss the hangman. So I got the Neo Rider. Which one do you have? Your your clone. I have the Teller Tarot. So we. The other way. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that's a very colorful deck. I mean, that's a very vibrant deck. It is, and I, you know, I, I. This one's just fun. Um, I. So those those corals and greens and aquas and pinks are my favorite colors. So <laughs> when I first saw it, I was drawn to it, but then I was like, I couldn't see that those colors. Oh, they're really look, strong. They are really strong. I will say they're really strong. Um, <clears throat> the the green though doesn't bother. Like the yellow, I think we talked about this a minute ago. The yellow on some of the original. Um, Rider Waite Smith, like the blue back, the plaid back. The yellow is really, it hurts my eyes. I don't know why this doesn't. Maybe it's just the different, I don't know. But this one just makes me happy. So, <laughs> yeah, no, uh, curious question. Do you yeah. find that on the Rider Waite clones only, mm -hmm. do you find that the colors can influence how you read a card? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I so, agree with that. Yeah, the original colors, if you hold yours up, the original colors on the Hangman are very um, staged. They're very, even on the on the Pamela Coleman Smith, there's gray in the background, right? Mm -hmm. It's very um, muted. And so, and there, there are, are things with color theory that Pamela Coleman Smith did, right? Yes, and I'm glad there because- There were reasons for the yellow, yeah. there were reasons for the red. So, you know, it does, it does. Um, and that's kind of why I always suggest beginners start with kind of an OG if they really want to dig in and study, just to to look at what is there and then look at what people yeah. do to kind of copy, this if that makes I mean, sense. The psychology of color is actually yes. very powerful and rooted in actual scientific research. So Yes, exactly. Okay, okay. different topic completely. Yeah, so let's get yeah, back. <laughs> so... What is your interpretation of the upright hangman? 
So the updraft king, man, that's just kind of funny because he's upside down, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, first of all, I look at the 12, one, two. Okay. The beginning of balance. So I see one as beginning and two as balance. And if you add them together with three, that's growth. And so I think that's a beautiful um, depiction of the hangman. You've got um, the beginning of balance, that moment of balance and stasis, right? Yeah. And then you're growing from that moment of stasis. Um, it's a new perspective. It's taking a moment to take a new perspective. You might have to sacrifice something to take that moment, mm -hmm. right? You might not be able to move forward the way you want to move forward in that moment. Um, but that it's, you're going to get the little halo there. You're going to get some clarity yeah. from taking that moment of stasis and, and, um, turning upside down, really looking at things from a new perspective. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I like this card. And, and okay, as I had mentioned, like this card is like, I'm having to live it right now. And I'll so this card really is for me also about the new perspective, not fighting, letting go. Mm -hmm. But I really find this card for me is about acceptance. You know, stop fighting what it is that's going on because that's going to create a lot of stress and tension. And in my mind, I don't know why, but do you know those little, that, that little thing, the Chinese fingers that you put your fingers in? Oh, yeah, the, the finger the trap. More you, the more yeah. you struggle, the, the tighter it gets. Uh -huh. You have to relax and just let it, you know, slowly just work it. That's how I see the hangman is, you know, uh, just letting go. And the thing is, the, the more you fight, the less likely that you're going to be able to get out. It's like being in uh, quicksand. You have to yes. stay still. You try to get your body up. You just lay flat so you can get out. Uh, and why I know that, I don't know, but I do. Because we're <laughs> connectors and that was a thing in all of our it TV was. shows. <laughs> survival. All these survival shows. Yes. Um, and then... Uh, yes, the, sa the idea of sacrifice is brand new to me, um, of like staying back, not trying to take control, letting other people, you know, have their say. That was new. And I, I, I do find it a little difficult to remember that when the card comes up. Frankly, I, I don't remember that because that's not really what I think about. But you were talking about balance. And I, in looking in the card... And if you look at the arms and the legs, they're very well balanced. You know, they get the linear or horizon line on the arms yep. and legs. Everything seems to be in place where it's supposed to be. Um, so that I find um, very interesting because of the balance that you brought in. So, um, and then when you let go, everything seems to settle. Exactly. Now, everything goes where it needs to go. Exactly. You'll get that insight, right? That little halo. You'll get that insight if you let go a bit and um, watch and learn from, yeah. from that. Now, mm -hmm. I've heard also that because his face is very calm, mm -hmm. he's there by choice. And so, exactly. so can you give me your idea of that and then I'll give you mine or do you want me to? Yeah. Go? So there are lots of people who are thought to be based on the hangman. Odin is one. Odin hung himself upside down from the tree of life from Yggdrasil um, so that he could gain knowledge. And that's how the runes came about. Um, so um, he sacrificed nine days and nine nights in order to gain that knowledge. So a lot of people say this might be um, Odin. Some people talk about it being saints because they wanted to be crucified yes. upside down. Yes. In the Marseille, originally, yeah, St. Peter, there are a couple others who refer who refused to be crucified right side I'm up. I'm familiar with the saints, but not uh, with yeah. Odin. So that's interesting for yeah. me. Yeah. Um, so in the original, I should have grabbed an original Marseille, but in the very, like the Visconti and the original Marseille, this card meant traitor because they hung traitors upside down by their foot. It was a really horrible way to go. <laughs> um, yeah, it's a long yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, the depiction of the, of the hangman, this hangman has put himself or herself there, themselves there, um, to take, a, to take a breath. Um, it is a living tree. It's not a cross. He's not nailed. He's tied mm -hmm. and he, easily reach up and tie. He's not that far from the ground. He could easily touch the ground and get himself out of this. But yeah, he has chosen this moment of sacrifice and this moment of 
reflection and this moment of pause to help him gain the greater knowledge that he needed. Yeah. So when, um, during my studies, the idea of that he put himself there at first, I was like, what? Then I got the concept of is that, you know, being still letting go is a choice. So yeah. you are actually making a conscious decision to be still, to let yeah. things happen, to try not to control. So in that sense, all of a sudden I understood, okay, now I understand why they say he's there by choice. Uh, because even in more in very difficult uh, situations, uh, like being a parent and loving your child and yes. letting your child make their own mistakes, you know, you just <laughs> yeah. have to be okay with it and let them, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. And so that makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, now it does. Uh, and then the, the halo is, for me, I think of the halo um, as enlightenment mm -hmm. uh, because that, because you, it, it deals with a new perspective, you know, you all of a sudden see something you probably didn't see before. You've learned something that never even crossed your mind or um, denial has been lifted. And so now you, yes. you have a new awareness, a new, um, it's just like an epiphany. So yes. I'm laughing. Yes, exactly. And, you know, um, the the idea that he's he's put himself there i think he also looks very much in a meditative state so sometimes when this card comes up i think of meditation as well oh, okay um, which goes with the idea of enlightenment exactly so, yeah i like that idea okay and do you um read reversals i do I okay. do. What, what do you have for a reversal? Uh, so yeah. reversal means, yeah, you've been hanging there long enough. You've got what you need to know. You have the knowledge that you need. You are grounded now because his feet are on the ground, not up in the air anymore. Right. You're grounded now. It's time to move. That's Interesting. Funny. I never would have seen that. I, 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 I do it. I see it as uh, having a tight grip and not, and refusing to let go. Oh that too yeah yeah, yeah. I, for me it's like it's uh if i see it as a person it's somebody a control freak somebody who is incapable of allowing things to happen they have to be in control or they feel like they're in chaos so all of a sudden yeah. they have anxiety and stuff um so that's generally how i see it uh, which isn't very nuanced, but it works. No, for I think it is. No, you I know, think. Oh, well, thank you. And, yeah, and you know, the reverses can be tricky, and um, and a lot of my experience with reversals depends on context, right? Mm -hmm. So, what card comes before and what card comes after? It could be it's time to move, or it could be hey, you need to let go, right? Yeah. Like yes, yes, yeah. I do use the cards. I, I use a lot of stuff. Um, I feel the energy between me and the person, how they ask the question, how they formulate the question. Um, sometimes I just sit still to see where they're at, to see what kind of energy they're giving me. And then I just sit and my intuition just kind of takes over and mm -hmm. I just follow it, you know, exactly. which, um, which is a really interesting process as I've gotten more self um, introspective about how I read. Yes, tarot is a great a great way to do that too. Now, you show you 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 have two favorite cards. I do because okay. I I can never pick. And <laughs> y'all, my favorites. We were talking about this earlier. My favorites change with the wind, but right yeah. now these are my favorites. So I love the sil. Let's see if I can get it in frame. The silver yeah, acorn king man. It's a, king it's it's a right cute now. card, isn't it? Cute. Yeah, it is. Um, we are really close to Maybon right now, which is um, kind of the witch's Thanksgiving, right? So it's time for me to take out all the harvesty <laughs> looking decks. So this one just came out yesterday and I just love this. I love that he's a jack-o'-lantern and his enlightenment here is the candle and his. Yes, his I was gonna mention, yeah. I know that it's coming from the top of his head because when you cut exactly. it off. So I think that's exactly. fabulous. I, that's the first the thing I noticed. Hero. Yeah, little scarecrow hanging upside down on wheat. I think that's wheat. Wheat or corn. Oh, I guess it's a tree. It is still a tree. 
my old eyes, I need glasses. But anyway, I just think this is a beautiful depiction uh, of of the hangman. I think it's it's super cute. There you go. There you sweet. go. Yeah. Um, and this the other one, one's really interesting. So I'm I'm curious. Yeah. For you to explain how that one works as a hangman. So this is from the Way Home Tarot. Um, the Way Home is a very not people-y deck. I don't know if you can see it because it's yes, very yes, dark. Yes, we can see it. We can see it. So this is a chrysalis um, hanging on a branch. It is the caterpillar turning into goo, right, before uh, they turn into a butterfly. So for the caterpillar, that is their huge moment of stasis. The caterpillar can't fight turning into goo. He's going to turn into goo whether he wants to or not. Um, whether or not he fights it means that it's going to be that much more awful, right? Yeah. And I think that's a really um, powerful meaning of the hangman card. But yeah, I mean, the caterpillar is going along in life, munching on leaves, and then he, you know, gets in, he builds this chrysalis and completely, oops, completely transforms. And I think after the hanged man has sat there for a little while, he's completely transformed in the way that he thinks and that that's yeah. evident by that halo yeah, and i and so i was thinking oh he is enlightened and so exactly. you know so yeah that's i love that realize. yeah after this so so yeah i really love that that tarot as well it's like i said not very peopley but it's very very beautiful and it sometimes yeah, it is. And sometimes people don't want a people deck. Do you know what I mean? When, they, yeah. So, so I have from Tarot Echoes the hang, this hangman. Do you have the Tarot Echoes? I don't. I want it so badly. <laughs> I mean, so I, I love this one. I don't, I wouldn't uh -huh. say it's my favorite, but it's one that I really like. Frankly, I don't know what would be my favorite one of the decks that I have, but this one stood out for me this time. Um, is the sense of freedom uh, that you, even though you find yourself in a very difficult situation or you know you can still you still have choices and you can still be free yes you know that the only constraints uh are self-imposed in that moment and so here even though he's tied to the tree he's he's not suffering right you know he's right. not struggling he's just very open to the experience uh so I, I really, I really like that, that feeling that this card. I love that. It's almost like the fool has walked up and found the hangman hanging up from the tree up there and is looking up at him. I love that perspective of it. It's yeah, beautiful. It's really pretty. I, I like, I, I'll look at it. So. Oh yeah. How pretty. Yeah. It's a beautiful card. Oh, that's so cool. She's amazing. She's an amazing artist. Very, she is. I, and I love do, do you use symbology at all? Um, I sometimes do. So um, there is, because of the way his feet are, there's a four here, right? Oh, so you yeah. Can, mm -hmm. um, read that numerologically if you like balance. Again, balance, mm -hmm. right? Um, the cross is a Tao cross. It's not a, a Christian cross. And then the really interesting thing that I love about the hangman, and I love that the front of the box, is the world is in the same position as the hanged man, only oh, right foot. okay, yeah. Like your feet are the same. Mm -hmm. So um, it's, it's contemplating that, that moment of getting to that ending of the world, contemplating that moment of practicing almost, <laughs> I feel like. Okay. Um, yeah, the living tree, it's not dead, it's alive, right? Um, I know it is ne a Neptune card, so it's kind of a watery card, so you're in your feels when you're in this, <laughs> yeah. in this card. Um, but that's about the extent of the um, symbology that I know really, except for the halo, which we already talked about. Yeah, I think you're way further ahead than me. Um, so mainly is the halo for me, which mm -hmm. I is enlightenment or knowledge or an epiphany. Uh, but now because of our conversation, I will always think of balance because of his legs and his arms and how symmetrical they are in, yeah. in relation to each other. So that will always, that will be part of my readings now is being oh, cool. Uh, so and that's why I'm doing these videos because, you know, I, I'm learning so much, which is really awesome. There's always something new to learn with tarot. That's why I love it so much. Right? Yes. And, and it's like the more you learn, the less you know. It's yes. like really like this. So um, thank you so much for coming by. I really appreciate it.
welcome. This was so much fun. Thank you for having me. I am, I am loving this series. This series has turned out to be a lot more exciting than I thought, um, a lot more insightful. It's really interesting to see people's perspectives and see like where there are in their tarot knowledge based on how long they've been reading tarot. Yep. Like, you have a lot of knowledge, like six, five years, and like you, you have a wealth of information. I went down a super rabbit hole. <laughs> that, that's I'm that's my big one. <laughs> <laughs> Hyper focus. You can learn a lot. <laughs> yeah, and you know, te go, moving into teaching it really has um, also broaden my knowledge because you got to know your stuff before you go stand in front of students. So. so that's another thing I have noticed that educators tend to have a lot more knowledge outside of just tarot, like they'll bring in numerology and symbology, and uh, the zodiac and the elements. And I've noticed that with educators. Yeah, well, and I think at least for me, I was an English teacher for, for many years. I have a master's in English. So picking apart stuff, that's like picking apart the story. Yeah. And I see tarot as a story, right? Picking apart the story is um, kind of what my brain likes to do. So. Very cool. <laughs> well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. It was really fun and I'm really enjoying watching this series. Thank you so much. I'm humbled that you had me on. Of course, thank you. Well, everybody, that was another card. And until next time, my name is Benny and I'm the Fools Apprentice. Bye guys.